The Novartis-sponsored Ask to Escalate study is currently enrolling in the United States. Ask to Escalate is a phase two dose escalation trial of asimenib monotherapy for second and first line CML chronic phase. All patients will start treatment with asimenib, 80 milligram daily, and can dose escalate if not meeting response milestones. The primary endpoint is major molecular response at 12 months in second line patients. Ask to Escalate is now enrolling. Late breaking abstract number three is a trial looking at how we can optimally deliver palliative care, both being more patient centric and conserving some scarce resources. So this trial uh, follows up on ASCO's clinical practice guideline that supports integration of palliative care early on after the diagnosis of an advanced cancer into standard oncology practice. Uh, this trial looked at 1,250 patients with non-small cell lung cancer that was advanced or metastatic. It also included 548 caregivers in it. It was an interesting randomization to how we deliver palliative care, whether it was in person, which was the standard arm, or delivered via telehealth. And the intervention was delivered every four weeks. So half of the patients had every four-week appointments with an inpatient visit with the palliative care team, and the other half of the patients had an every four-week appointment delivered by telehealth. The primary endpoint of the study was quality of life at 24 weeks using the FACT lung scoring. Um, it was assessed at baseline 12 weeks and 24 weeks. Secondary endpoints looked at the caregiver involvement, depression and anxiety, coping, and perceptions of prognosis. The pandemic occurred in the middle of it, so they did convert some of the in-person visits to telehealth visits, but it was only about 4% of the visits, so it wasn't a majority. The results showed that quality of life at 24 weeks was equal between the two arms. So we don't need to bring patients in for palliative care visits if they aren't coming in anyway or if they would prefer to have the intervention at home. Caregiver involvement was decreased in the telehealth group. 36% of visits um, happened if it was given by telehealth versus almost 50% if it was an in-person visit. I suspect that that was largely due to the patient coming in with the family member who might drive them to the visit, so the caregiver was more present. There was no depression between the two delivery methods for palliative care in depression, anxiety, coping, or perceptions of prognosis. So my take on this is that there is a much a broader dissemination potential for palliative care. I worked at an academic medical center for 30 years where we did have a palliative care team, but it wasn't a big team. And we actually, even in that setting, had limited availability for these kind of routine every month visits. Out in the community, rurally, lots of practices don't have the ability to have a dedicated palliative care team but we could offer it through telehealth now uh, when applicable. So I think this is more patient-centric. Patients can choose whether they would prefer the telehealth versus the inpatient visits. I think it could be mixed and matched, too. And we can get palliative care delivered to more patients. I certainly think that with the pandemic waivers, we're using telemedicine a lot more, and we need to lock in through policy the ability to be able to deliver telehealth outside of the very most rural patients. At the annual meeting, we also have a related abstract from the same study, and it looked at what they called palliative care. So this was abstract uh, 12,000, and they used a, a randomization between just giving the palliative care every four weeks in person versus a stepped approach, which was you had one in-person visit shortly after your diagnosis of advanced lung cancer, and then you didn't have another visit unless there was a change in treatment 
or unless there was a hospitalization. And then you reverted to the every four week. And that stepped approach also was shown to have no difference between the arms. So for patients who are doing very well, introduction to the palliative care team, but then using them when there are major events that happen, like a change in treatment, a, a progression of the tumor, or a hospitalization, gave the same quality of life outcomes. So I do think that this offers a much broader and more patient-centric approach to how we can deliver palliative care and how we can actually achieve what ASCO's recommended in our clinical practice guideline, integration of palliative care early into oncology care.